So, how do you actually get into Oxford for engineering? I applied to Cambridge this year and I got in. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did that. From my personal statement to my supercurriculars, my interview and my admissions tests so that you can do it too. So I'm just going to quickly talk about my A-levels predicted grades. So I was predicted A stars in maths, further maths, physics and chemistry. And this prediction comes from mainly the summer mocks, but also from sort of class performance and end of unit tests that happen throughout the year. So make sure you prepare as well as possible for those mocks as getting those A star predicted grades are quite important for your application. However, it is of course certainly not make or break. So as long as you meet the minimum requirements stated on the Cambridge website, you should be fine and you'll always have a chance. Let's talk about my super curriculars and my personal statement. I didn't win any Olympiads or national competitions, but I still got into Cambridge, so how? My achievements were by no means anything special, but here's the thing. The admissions tutors already have your A-level predicted grades as well as your admissions test results. So they already have a good idea of your academic ability. What you need to convey in your personal statement is your passion, your passion for engineering, rather than listing a million achievements. Of course, you do want to write about your super curriculars, but importantly, you want to use them to show how much you love engineering. I'll quickly explain the difference between super curriculars and extracurriculars. So your super curriculars would be things that are directly related to engineering. So this would include hands-on work, if you built an engine, for example, or even just physics or math related things like competing in the math or physics Olympiads. However, the extracurriculars would be like if you were the captain of the football team or something like that. So there are things that are not directly related. So your supercurriculars will ultimately become the main focus of your personal statement. Here's what I put in mind. So over the course of two years, I did a competition called F1 in schools with a few classmates in my year. This was incredibly worthwhile for a number of reasons. First of all, I was able to build something with my own two hands and produce a physical product, as ultimately, engineering is about being hands-on and bringing ideas to life. Secondly, this allowed me to display a particular skill I learned in this process, which is learning how to use CFD, which stands for Computational Fluid Dynamics. So this was just something that I personally found interesting, which was aerodynamics in F1 cars. And in the personal statement, I was able to link these two things together and show how one inspired the other. Another thing I wrote about was the books that I read. The Cambridge Reading List is a good place to look to see if any of the books interest you. However, I didn't just name drop and leave it there. I explained what I learned and how it pushed me deeper into exploring another area of engineering. For example, one of the books that I wrote about was actually a physics textbook, and it was on classical mechanics. I talked about how I worked through some mechanics problems, and then how this then inspired me to look into Lagrangian mechanics. This showed my desire to go beyond the syllabus and look into further topics that I'm interested in. These are some of the more important parts of your personal statement. I'd also advise not spending too much characters on your extracurriculars, as they are one of the less important parts, and your characters are really valuable. Some people may say that your interviewers won't read your personal statements, but in my experience, that's not true. However, it is true that it won't become a deciding factor by any means, and even in the interview, it will only play a very minor part in it. But it's still worth writing a very good personal statement, not only for your other universities, but also so that you're prepared in case the interviewers ask you a question on it during the interview. I submitted my personal statement a few days before the Oxbridge UCAS deadline, which was I think October 15th this year, around the same time as I sat my admissions test, the ESAT. So let's talk about the admissions test. For Cambridge, you have to sit the ESAT, and for Oxford, it's the PAT. For these tests, make sure that you're preparing early and as well as possible. I must say, the admissions tests, along with the interview, form the most important parts of your application. I personally started preparing for it in the middle of summer by doing past paper ENGA questions and also looking at paper one of TMUA. The classical mechanics book that I mentioned earlier also helped with sort of my physics intuition. But obviously, this is extremely optional and the content in the textbook would be much harder than anything that could come up. When the exam neared, I finally finished all the ENGA and NSAA past paper questions so then I went to look at some other similar exams like PAT. And so if you're doing PAT, you could also try some ESAT questions. Some people ask about if STEP is worth it to prepare for the ESAT or even the PAT. And I'd say definitely not. It's probably way too hard. Of course, it'll improve your math ability, but the skills that they're trying to test are completely different. 
And ultimately, I ended up with just above a 7.5 average in my ESAT, which was decent, and it earned me a spot in the interview process. Now let's talk about the interview. I had two interviews, each around 25 minutes long, and this is how it went. Both the interviews started with one or two starter questions on my personal statement. So that's why you have to make sure not only do you know what you've written well, but that you can also explain it. This went on for about five minutes, and then it was straight into the technical questions. This is what almost all Oxbridge engineering interviews are like, which you can see if you search up a mock interview, for example, online on YouTube, as the colleges sometimes post some examples. Obviously, I can't share the specifics of my questions, but they were generally really physics heavy. Most of the questions they asked were a twist on A-level content, so it definitely won't be impossible to answer for you. You must also remember that the interview will try to guide you through it and won't just stay silent and leave you helpless if you get stuck. The interviewer wants to see how you think, so make sure you're explaining your thought process thoroughly and clearly. Practice is of course important for the interview, so I found my mock interviews with my teachers extremely useful. So if possible, try to get some mock interviews from your teachers, or even just ask your friends if you want to interview each other. This will force you to learn how to explain your thinking out loud, and also to think on the spot. I also scoured the internet for past interview questions and also mock interviews, which gave me a good idea of what a real interview was actually like, and also the style of questions that they would usually ask. Do keep in mind that they can ask both maths and physics questions, but also even just general qualitative engineering questions. However, in my experience, it's usually technical physics questions that are asked. So these would be things like mechanics, electricity, or even graph sketching when it comes to maths. Now, I do want to add that a website that I found really useful when I was preparing was IWantToStudyEngineering.com, which is Cambridge's own website for preparing for interviews. I'll put the link in the description below. This was genuinely quite useful. On there is just a collection of questions that can help you prepare for your interview. So how did my interview actually go? Well, I wasn't too sure, to be honest, and I didn't know how to feel about it. There were some parts where there was something simple that I should have seen, but I didn't. So this left me quite frustrated at the time and afterwards. But importantly, during the interview, don't let these mistakes affect you and just keep going at it. And after the interview, there really isn't anything you can do. So don't think about it too much. It was just a case of waiting a month and a bit for me to hear my results back. And fortunately for me, all the parts of my application put together as a whole was good enough for me to make it. As I was editing, I just wanted to add that results day was on January 30th, I think. And then they give you your offer conditions, which can vary from college to college. And my offer was two A stars and two A's, which is more of a standard offer. So all that was left for me to do was to meet the grades. Let me know in the comments below which section I should go deeper into, and I'll make another video on it. So stay tuned and subscribe.